Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast with Kevin Harrington and Seth Green. Kevin Harrington is the inventor of the infomercial, one of the original sharks from the hit TV show Shark Tank, and has generated over $5 billion in TV and digital direct response sales. Seth Green is the world's first trusted authority on cutting edge direct response marketing, a best selling author, and the only three time Marketer of the Year nominee. On the podcast, Kevin and Seth interview sharkpreneurs who share straight talk on what it takes to explode your business. Why do so many businesses struggle while others seem to explode overnight? Do you wish you had the secret to this type of exponential growth? Now, I've scaled more than 20 businesses to over $100 million, and it's not just luck. In my new book with Mark Tim, Mentor to Millions, you'll learn the repeatable framework I use in all my business ventures for massive success. Order at KevinMentor.com and get over $1,000 in bonuses. Head to KevinMentor.com. Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast. This is your host, Seth Green. Today, I've got the very good fortune to be doing a unique episode. Today, my co-host, Kevin Harrington, inventor of the infomercial and original Shark on Shark Tank is with us. However, he's not interviewing our guest with me. He and his partner, Mark Tim, are the guests today. Mark, for those of you who don't know, has been a serial entrepreneur for more than two decades. He started and sold multiple businesses. He grew one out of his garage to the number one supplier of its kind in North America. He was a runner up for National Small Business of the Year presented by President Bush in the White House. Uh, his resume goes on and on and on. Today, we're here to interview Kevin and Mark about their new book that is taking the world by storm, Mentor to Millions, which, I mean, you've been on headline news, you've been all over the TV, you've been all over the radio, you've been on a couple hundred podcasts. Um, I, I, I think you're a shoe in for New York Times bestseller list. We were talking about that before the show based on the activity of how many tens of thousands of copies are selling. Uh, Kevin, Mark, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, Seth, great to be here on a little different uh, view of the of the show. So yes, we're Seth. flipping the camera around this time. Yeah, Seth, thanks for having us on here. I love the show, love what you guys are doing. Just can't wait to uh, share what we've been up to. Awesome. So, Kevin, you've got multiple, you've written multiple books already. Why write another one? What? Tell us a little bit about the impetus behind Mentor to Millions. So, it, it, it's, a, it's a very interesting story how Mark and I got together um, I've had a lot of mentors in my life. I, I, I kind of joke that my first mentor was my father when I was 11 years old, but he coached me on entrepreneurship. And literally, um, I've worked inside his bars and restaurants, but I wasn't just serving food or washing dishes. I was in the back counting the money, literally, with my dad, okay? That got me excited at an early age. And so, um, I, but had mentors all my life that really helped me in many, many ways. Uh, I also, as, as one of the original co-founders of the Entrepreneurs Organization, you got mentors on a monthly basis that were assigned to mentor you as part of your joining EO. And so I know mentorship is powerful and um, Mark, uh, and I were both mentored. This is the, 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 the amazing part of this story by Zig Ziglar. And so Zig passed away a number of years ago. I was talking to Tom Ziglar about doing some things. Mark was talking to Tom Ziglar about some things and, and he's involved with the Ziglar family also. Uh, and, and, and Tom put us together and said, you guys should meet. And through that, Mark and I went through a mentor-mentee relationship and then we said, we, we really need to write a book about this. So, so it's, it's kind of come full circle. Uh, for many, many years, I've been helping entrepreneurs and mentoring them. I've had a lot of great mentors in my life. And when I met Mark, we said, we owe it to the world to tell folks how they can get a mentor, how to be a good mentee, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, Mark, what, what about your version of that story? Well, my version of the story is uh, is the same in terms of how we met, and that's the cool part is that uh, I didn't know Kevin, Kevin didn't know me, but we had this mutual mentor, and the children decided to put us together. Oftentimes, people are like, how do I find a mentor? And I actually believe, Seth, that you already know everybody you need to know to accomplish everything you've ever been put to accomplish on this earth. 
The question is, do you have the courage to raise your hand? Do you have the vulnerability to step forward and say, I'm ready to be helped. I'm ready to be mentored. And so then I, I get this opportunity. I get this introduction. I learn about Kevin. My kids were crazy about Kevin anyway. They were, you know, already ra raving fans of Shark Tank. And so here I am talking to Kevin. And I'm like, wait a minute. I, this guy could really mentor me to new levels, but he's crazy busy. I mean, I get dizzy just looking at his schedule. So when I got to the point of having the courage to ask Kevin to say, would you mentor me? The one thing I did is I said, Kevin, here's what I, just, I want you to mentor me, but here's my irresistible offer. Okay. Kevin Harrington, your time is valuable. I commit to always valuing your time every time we're together and making it easy for you to mentor me. And then number two, I commit to being your best student. And that was my irresistible offer to be, to have Kevin as a mentor. And he said, yes, because nobody had ever gone to Kevin in all the years of, of pitching him to help and say, I will be your best student. Now I had to follow through. I had to listen. I had to act. I had to implement. I had to come back to him. I had to be honest and vulnerable about, you know, failures and successes. But that's really what it takes. If you find someone like Kevin or you find the right person to mentor you, you have to become their best student. And then you've got to take what you've learned and share it with other people as well, because that's what locks in the wisdom. So uh, I got the same story as Kevin, but I wanted to give everybody the rest of the story, which is, okay, we met. How did I convince a shark from Shark Tank to mentor me? Absolutely. And I, full disclosure, obviously, Kevin's our podcast co-host, a client, a business partner, and a mentor of mine. I also My, my mentorship was started by saying, I'm here to drive you to the airport um, <laughs> before Uber. So I had a different yeah. level of courage. So is to kidnap him in a car for 20 to 30 minutes. It's a great story. You know, I spoke at an event, Mark, in uh, Buffalo. It was an right? EO event. Yeah. Yeah. I spoke at EO event in Buffalo. And I was out waiting for a taxi. Seth comes along. Hey, how about I take you to the airport? And of course, you know, we had a, we've been, what an amazing ride we've had ever since. So I, I say that it, th strange things happen for a reason. And, and there's a reason why that happened and why we're here today. So you okay, can so, take the courage route or the kidnapping route. But yes, the, courage <laughs> or kidnapping. That's the next book yeah. title. Oh, no, I he wouldn't let me out of the car. Okay? That's also true. <laughs> <laughs> I swear the button just doesn't work. The doors won't unlock until you say yes. All right. So what you talked about giving back and you talked about committing to be, you, Mark, you talked about committing to be his best student. Kevin, what was the attraction to that? Because you have people who want to be mentored by you or be in business with you all day, every single day. Uh, we see the pictures that come in just from the podcast alone and yeah. try and keep up with those. How did Mark stand out? Why did you agree to mentor him when he wasn't saying, hey, buy a piece of my company? Right. So, I mean, let's, I'll say this. Uh, I get a lot of pitches, obviously, tens of thousands of them. Still, I'm getting 150 a week. But first of all, Mark was in the product business, which is near and dear to me. I've, I've been in product businesses now for about 40 years. So, so I said, okay, there's, I, I think one of the most important things in a mentor mentee relationship is having relevance of, of, of information and, and knowledge in the field. Right. Um, now we, we were um, in the business of shifting ourselves from as seen in TV into digital and Amazon and all these things. Mark actually was in business in, in, in with an Amazon business. So I said, you know, there's there's a lot of a uh, lot of movement going on. Amazon obviously is is is, is so successful. So um, I, I said this could be a good thing because I'm in this business. Mark's in this business, and at the end of the day. I said, this, you know, it makes sense for me, but also the Zig Ziglar connection. And the very first time that Mark and I spoke, Tom was on the phone and the three of us, and we just connected. And it, it was like, you could just feel that it was meant to be. So, um, it, but the, the good news is Mark wasn't like in nuclear engineering or something where I'm like, I just can't help this situation. So I have to turn things down if I don't feel I've got the knowledge base. Sure. Mark, we know we can obviously get the attraction as to why you would want Kevin to be your mentor, given all of his success. What about for the folks watching this, reading the book, 
who might not necessarily either need a celebrity investor mentor or who might not have access to kidnap one, put him in a car or meet him through a mutual connection. What about mentorship on a more local level? How would you have approached that slightly differently? Yeah, that's, that's a great question because, uh, you know, I said earlier that uh, I believe you already know everybody you need to know to accomplish everything you need to accomplish. And so that doesn't necessarily mean you have to find a shark from Shark Tank or have Zig Ziglar. The fact of the matter is, is that, you know, the formula that Kevin and I are talking about, about raising your hand, about stepping forward, about looking, about being candid, about where you need mentorship applies at every level. In fact, I had someone the other day say, well, I just can't get a mentor because I don't have any network. Well, the fact that they were connected to what I was talking about told me that they had social media. And I said, okay, I'll make you a deal. If you'll go on all your social media channels and you'll say your name and say, right now I'm ready to be mentored in the area of growth of my business and I'm looking for the right mentor, can you help me? I said, not only will they show up, not only will you find that mentor, but you'll have to choose through. You may have to interview and, and decide who's going to mentor you. And this is someone who believes they don't have a network because see, here's the deal. You, it may not be your immediate inner circle, but your inner circle will introduce you to whoever it is that they know that would be your mentor. See, the, the best part is, is that we got together through Zig Ziglar and he had this famous quote, you can have everything in life you want, if you'll just help enough other people get what they want. And so deep down, we like to help, we want to help. And it's so interesting that people are so shy to raise their hand and say, I want a mentor, I'm ready to be a mentor. There are more people out there than people realize that are ready, willing, and able to help. You just need to step up and ask. And if you don't believe you have a network, take the challenge that I gave this guy the other day because he did it and now he's sorting through who's going to be his mentor. And this was someone that believed they didn't have a network to be able to mentor. So it can be that simple. But then once you find that person, you do need to be their best student. And then once you learn their wisdom, you do need to teach it to someone else. That's Kevin and I's formula. You have to find the right mentor. You have to be their best student. And then you have to teach someone else. And when you do those three things, that last part is the part people forget. You've got to teach other people what you've learned because that locks it in, that forges it, that makes it permanent, and then you can build on that wisdom. That makes a lot of sense. Now, Kevin, you took a different approach to the book. It isn't so much you telling everybody how to be a mentor, how to get a mentor. It's really told through the story of your mentoring of Mark, yes. almost like a kind of Tuesdays with Maury-esque book. Why did you take that approach? Well, there's so many how-to books out in the marketplace, uh, Seth. Um, it, you, you can find, you know, every how-to under the sun. In fact, as I started talking to publishers and, and uh, Mark and I got together and we were looking at, okay, what is the opportunity here for a breakthrough with our book? M many of them were like, look, you're a shark. Sharks have a lot of knowledge, obviously. Um, yeah, just because you're a shark doesn't mean the book's going to be successful and you've got that knowledge. So uh, putting it into a how-to is, is, is not going to necessarily guarantee anything. So we had to come up with something different. The, the book marketplace is very competitive. And, and so uh, and we, we said this is very natural because this is actually what happened with Mark and I was this journey. And it was, it was so powerful because... Mark would, he would bring his family down here to St. Pete, Florida, and they'd have a place, they'd, they'd rent an Airbnb or a, a place for a month, and the kids and, the, and, and, and Ann, his wife, and the whole family, and one-on-ones, and -on we, you know, as he was bringing the family in, and, and, and by the way, they were helping and participating in, in many aspects of what we were putting together also. So um, it, it just made a lot of sense and, and, and I just think sometimes people learn um, and when things are taking a little different approach. You beat them on the head with, with uh, this is how to do it. They're going to listen. But the way we went about it, where it's the journey that you take, you kind of get involved in that journey. And there, I think it's more powerful when it's all said and done. 
Yeah, absolutely. I was definitely captivated by the story, and I certainly learned a lot about you through Mark's relationship with you that I didn't know. Now, Mark mentioned the dizzying journey that is your calendar, which I am very familiar with trying to get time on. So you're so busy and have achieved so much. What's, I get that Mark was in a similar product business to you, but what's in it for you? Other than perhaps maybe learning a few tricks from Mark on, let's say, the product side in the 21st century that you might not have known, if he wasn't in the similar business, but because you've mentored other folks, why do it? Why, why take the time out of your over busy schedule? Because you could have easily filled that time with someone writing you a big check. Yeah, you know what? Look, I mean, at the end of the day, getting another check is not going to change my life anyway, right? So I've, I've decided I spent the first 30 years of my life uh, learning what I wanted to do. And, and it's at the end of that 30 years that I actually, I was 28 years old and I found the infomercial, right? The, as seen on TV. Then, so, uh, so that was kind of the learning side of what I wanted to do. Then I spent the next 30 years and taking me up until a couple of years ago where I was building businesses and launching hundreds of products and taking companies public, et cetera. That I've done, I've, I've had a lot of fun with it. I've made a lot of money doing that. But now I've decided the last 30 years of my life, I really want to spend helping entrepreneurs, mentoring, and I'm still going to do deals and we're still going to do podcasts and things like this. But it's, it, you know, I have time that I allocate for mentoring and I have lots of people that I'm mentoring right now and continue to do so. And for, for Mark, yes, um, Mark and I, um, it started off as true mentoring, but then we said, hey, maybe there's some things we can do together. So Mark's actually, is, he's got extreme knowledge in the Amazon space. So we've given Mark projects for, for, to, help us, to help us with his knowledge in Amazon. So um, I think the mentoring is, was, was done on an overall basis, but there's some specific things that I've gained also in the relationship. And I think at the end of the day, this is one of the things that we, we say that um, mentees can actually provide value to the mentors along the way. And, and I've benefited from that um, also. Mark, what did you discover writing the book with Kevin that you didn't already know? Well, I mean, the book is actually, like you said, it's a journey. It's a journey of an entrepreneur and his mentor relationship. And so as we're going through, you know, and we're writing the book, we had to go back and we had to really unpack some of our time together. And so what I really discovered is just how much I learned, just how much was caught, not even taught. And so I call it contagious proximity. And so, and, it, and, I, and I love that phrase because, you know, yeah, we're virtual right now, but at one point I actually moved my family down to St. Petersburg, not to stalk Kevin, but to travel on the same planes as him. And so he was crazy busy. And so getting time on his schedule was difficult, yet we were traveling to the same place. I was going to the same events with him. So I figured out that if we flew together on the same plane, and one of my favorite stories in the book is actually this great lesson that I learned on a trip from Tampa to Toronto on the plane. And so a lot of the mentorship took place in Ubers, in hotel you know, lobbies and restaurants, in, on planes, and it was that contagious proximity. And so people don't realize, they think, oh, I've got to set up this meeting or I've got to you know, set up this intentional meeting and Kevin, tell me all your wisdom. The reality is, is that I learned most of what I learned from Kevin in contagious proximity to him, watching him, listening to him, talk to other people, listening to him in meetings. And because I was in that proximity, it became contagious and I was able to absorb it. Then I was able to follow up with him, go deeper in some of these areas. But really the cool part of the book is, is that how much of it happened just by being in that proximity, just by being in the same place at the same time and watching and paying attention and being the best student. It wasn't that we set up weekly meetings or we set up, you know, you know, we had these, this like rigid schedule because he just doesn't have the time for that to happen. So I committed to being in proximity to him. And that's a lot of the stories, a lot of the analogies, a lot of the examples came from that contagious proximity. Hey Mark, when you were when we were on that plane to Toronto, I think you were gonna tell the story of, 
of what I brought on the plane, just real yeah, quick. I will, I will, because it's it's one of the, it's it, people who've read the book, they like point to that story. Almost everybody points to that story because I get on the plane. I've already been traveling with Kevin a little bit. I knew his bags. I knew I kept his laptop. I recognized everything. But on this trip, he gets on with two bags. And so, and he, and he neatly tucks them in the overhead. He likes to kind of have his little routine and everything. And the plane takes off. And he gets up and he doesn't get his laptop. Now I get my laptop, I open it up, I'm looking for the internet, you know, Wi-Fi. But he gets this other bag down. And he gets the bag down and he starts pulling out newspapers and trade journals and magazines. And he's got this little folder. And when he finds something he likes, he rips it out, puts it in the folder, and then he literally just tosses, you know, when he's done reading in front of him. And all of a sudden he's getting this pile. And it was like the stewardess was in on this get gig, you know, like I'm watching this going, what's going on? She comes by with a trash bag and she fills up the trash bag full of all this stuff. Then he proceeds to make another pile and she comes along and she fills up the trash bag. And when it's all said and done, he's got this nice tidy little folder of everything he gleaned out of all these publications. It had to be a dozen newspapers and a dozen journals and trade magazines. And from Tampa to Toronto, he got through that entire bag. I maybe did a dozen emails. But what I figured out is that this was his aggressive curiosity. This was how he inputs things into his mind. This is where he looks for trends, where are eyeballs. And this is how he makes use of his precious time when he's traveling. It was, it was something I never forgot. And it's something that super successful people read. They consume information. They process. And Kevin is one of those people. And people who say they don't have time to read, they don't have time to be successful. That is, there's a number of writer down or golden nuggets in that story, absolutely. So Kevin, for folks who might be thinking about trying to get a mentor, are they all gonna be expected? To, were you expecting to have another member of the family? Were you expecting to adopt Mark and have him come live next to you and follow you around everywhere? Is that part of the normal mentor-mentee relationship? Because I might've missed out on that. Well, you know, it, it, Mark was, was very, uh, it, as I love that word, contagious uh, uh, positioning type of thing, right? So um, I, I love what he did and I welcomed him and, and again, uh, this all started because of, of, of the relationship with the Ziegler family and Tom and Julie and Cindy, the family is amazing. So, um, the, you know, the, the kids, I love, they, they brought value to even the conversations. And, you know, I think one, one of his daughters, uh, uh, while we were all hanging out was pitching Mark to, you know, for a job in the, in the, in the company that, that, that they were building inside the family. And so, um, it, it, it turned out amazing and, I, and, and, and I do it all over again in a heartbeat. And I, th in fact, Mark's going to be down here all next week, right? We're going <laughs> to be hanging out again. So of course, now we're talking about our book together. So, uh, we've got, um, lots of great stuff happening. So, I mean, at the end of the day, people need mentors and, and I think, you know, it, I've, I've, I've used them to achieve great things in my life. And it, you know, you start, just go, go to your internal networks. And uh, in, in the old days, I would go to my accountants, my lawyers, the people I'm writing checks to and doing business with, Hey, I need help. I need this. I need that. And so you, there's, there's a whole process. And by the way, we talk about all this in the book, so we don't need to get into it now. Um, it, you know, it, we can help you find the right mentors, how to be the best student of the mentor, and then how to also pay it back and then start mentoring other people, which is kind of the three-step approach here that, that we recommend. Awesome. Absolutely phenomenal book and amazing story for our, we know your time's incredibly valuable. Um, for those folks watching or listening, where is the best place for them to go to get the book and tell us a little bit, tease them a little bit about some of the amazing bonuses they're going to get when they go through you. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that. Uh, so, so bottom line is, is that uh, they can get the book wherever books are sold. Okay. It's going to be available everywhere. It already is for all the pre-orders. We've, we've already hit a number one status on uh, a bestseller on Amazon, but we want people to go to kevinmentor.com. And here's why Kevin and I put together, because so many people were asking us about mentorship and can we mentor them? So we put together a 30 day mentorship program and anyone who buys the book goes to kevinmentor.com shows us that they bought the book, we're going to give them 30 days of mentorship. Some will be live, some will be virtual, some will be recorded, but 30 days of mentorship so that they'll develop the habit of mentorship. And after that, they're going to want mentors in their life forever, and they're going to want to be mentors. 
Awesome. All right. This has been Seth Green for Sharkpreneur with Kevin Harrington and Mark Tam. Go to kevinmentor.com. Make sure to show the receipt so that you can get all the amazing bonuses that come with it. Kevin, Mark, thanks so much for joining us. Congratulations again on the book and its amazing results. Thanks, Seth. Great being here. Thanks, Seth. Appreciate you. Thanks, everybody, for watching or listening. We'll talk or see you next time. Do you need money to fund your idea, product, or service? Are you ready to take your business to the next level but need capital to get it done? Kevin Harrington has heard more than 50,000 pitches and knows how to help you make the perfect pitch to get the funding for your entrepreneurial dream. He's distilled the process down in his perfect pitch cheat sheet, and it's yours for free. Just text PITCH to him right now at 727-888-2100. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 right now and claim your free perfect pitch cheat sheet. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 to start funding your dream today. This show has been produced by Market Domination, LLC. To discover how you can have your own show completely done for you and turn it into a real published book and become the authority in your marketplace, go to www.marketdominationllc.com slash podcast offer.